go. These two, I mean, I can see either one of them going the distance in this. Lamb shoulder, more fat flavor, takes a little bit more to cook it, but if you can get the cook on it correct, the flavor's gonna be outrageous. Spaghetti squash is my favorite squash. I use it in place of pasta all the time. 30 minutes, a little tough, I need to go to microwave. Spice grinder, anytime you can get the spice in its whole form and you can toast it and then grind it, you're gonna do great with that. Breaded, we all know this game. Panko. And then tempeh is a fermented soybean that's formed into blocks and commonly eaten as a meat substitute because it's got a little bit of chew to it. When lamb hits my brain, it's all about Moroccan flavors. Like harissa and lamb is this marriage made in heaven. And then it's like, how am I gonna work tempeh, which is kind of like a protein as well. So immediately I'm going meatball, but not just any old meatball. Like if I had a Moroccan mama, it would be her meatball. I'm back here for Tournament of Champions number five, and I definitely think I'm more ready this year than any other season so far, just because of the opportunity I've had to open the restaurants, compete on triple threat, mentally just where I need to be to win this competition. Looking at this dish, lamb, I don't want to hide it. I want to show that I can take this beautiful piece of lamb that has little room for error and turn it into, like, pastrami. I've never even touched tempeh before, but I think I'm gonna treat that as the bread for a pastrami sandwich and turn this into something special. Joining me tonight are my two roving culinary reporters, Michelin recommended chef, whose brain is insured by the Culinary Institute of himself, the one and only chef Justin Warner, and renowned food writer who's been around the world in 80 plates, Sir Simon Jundar. Now the two of them are studying the chef's every move so they can faithfully present their dishes to the judges during the blind tasting. The first thing I want to get started on is getting the spaghetti squash into the microwave. Set it, forget it, don't think about it until it's done. And then I immediately need to start working on my meatballs. 30 minutes is not a lot of time. Tempeh, it's got like a nice texture to it. To me, it was like, wow, this is the perfect thing to put through the grinder to add into my meatballs. Lamb shoulder chops, it's not a pretty bit of meat. It's got bones throughout, a lot of fat. But the meat's delicious, so I'm gonna put that sucker in the grinder, like recreate it. I want the judges to know that I did something special for them. What's game plan? Uh, I'm gonna do a Moroccan breaded meatball. Got it. Pickled spaghetti squash underneath, lebna on the bottom, spice grinder for a bunch of herbs. Got it. Ah. How's the salt? There's a lot of salt in that harissa. I'll get there. Chef, when you have a plan, let me know. I'm making a play on a pastrami sandwich. I'm gonna use a spice grinder, make like a pastrami rub for the lamb chop. I'm gonna make a quick sauerkraut out of the spaghetti squash. I'm well gonna bad. make tempeh rye bread for it. Oh, cool. Caraway seed, panko, breaded. I gotcha. The microwave is easily the fastest and best way to take care of steaming a squash. He's gonna make a pastrami out of the lamb. He's gonna make a sauerkraut out of the squash. And he's gonna make a rye bread out of the tempeh. What? Where is the spice grinder? Right here, chef. Love it. I'm gonna grind all the spices that you would expect, that crusty, like, spice situation on the outside of pastrami. God, I love that smell. I'm gonna add in the powders, like the garlic powder and the onion powder that would be in a traditional pastrami spice as well. Traditional pastrami, brown sugar. Pastrami is brined or cured in some capacity, and so I heavily salt the lamb before I actually put the pastrami spice on it, and then vacuum packing everything so it actually feels like it's been brined or cured. Are we gonna see the vacuum sealer? Gotta get that spice in there, chef, you know? Yes, I do know. Winning a tournament of champions is an incomplete part of my resume. I've never left a job undone, and I don't plan on leaving this one. Our first battle of the night is an outside-the-box culinary boxing match between two West Coast warriors. Next up, we have an East Coast face-off between notable newcomer chef Dale Talday no! and formidable TOC opponent Karen Akunowitz. And later, returning TOC3 champ Tiffany Faison takes on her first opponent of the tournament, the impressive winner of our East Speed qualifier, Chef Chris Scott. To be the champ, you got to beat the champ. That is a battle I promise you, you don't want to miss. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are in the middle of a lamb shoulder showdown between chefs Michael Botaggio and Chef Krista Lidke. 
We have 22 minutes, chefs. 22. Back in the Wayfair screening room, Chef Shota Nakajima and Chef Carlos Anthony are watching our first battle of the night. Okay, here we go, dude. We're back. This is going to go into the... Into the farce as well as into the breading. You know, when you toast your spices, it wakes up the flavor. So coriander, fennel seed, hitting them in a spice grinder, now you've got the fresh dropping into not only the filling of my meatball, but into my dredge and my breading on the outside. So what else is going in this dredge? I got panko, salt, and all the seed mix. Bringing in eggs to the party and some breadcrumbs to soak things up, and then that harissa, all of that together is gonna hopefully make for a delicious, juicy meatball. While my lamb chops are in the back sealer making pastrami, I'm gonna make my tempeh bread. Can't have pastrami sandwich without mustard. Cover up the taste of this delicious tempeh. I want it to taste like rye bread. One of the predominant flavors in rye bread is caraway seed. Now I have another opportunity to use the spice grinder. Don't get carried away, chef. Pardon? That was a caraway joke. Oh. Tempeh is brushed in Dijon mustard, then standard breading procedure using flour, egg wash, and my caraway bread crumbs. Let's go, Michael V. Michael V. Michael V. Michael V. Michael V. I'm glad he wore his fire suit. Right? Hey! How are you doing? What's up, brother? How are you? How are you doing? See you guys. Good to see you, man. OK, Michael's got a inferno. A lot of people see flames, and they freak out. Right? right. Oh, you're burning it. Right. But, yeah. it, you know, this is a professional. Getting gorgeous char on it without it getting black. I think that charred smokiness from the grill will help accentuate the flavor of pastrami. After I pull the tempeh out of the fryer, I realize it's pretty thick. So what I'm thinking is I want to slice it in half just like you would some rye bread for a sandwich. Make sure we say it's breaded, so I breaded something and made bread. Understood. My meatballs have a nice crisp on the outside, and then I'm going to finish them in the oven. And the spaghetti squash is fully done. I really want to do spaghetti squash two ways, because I want to transform the spaghetti squash. If you haven't seen the spaghetti squash before, you can see here it comes out almost like spaghetti. And I really want to make sure that you see the spaghetti squash on the plate. Is that going to be a pickled spaghetti yeah, squash? That's the plan. That's going to be the whole squashy salad put on the top. Is that rice vinegar? Yes. A little sugar, coriander seed in the pickle. The other one's going to be a beautiful, creamy sort of puree underneath my meatballs. Lots of butter, a little bit of onion for sweetness. This is the perfect, lovely canvas of spaghetti squash on the plate. Yeah, that's real good. Let's bring the squash to the party. How are we doing? My spaghetti squash is cooked. I'm going to let it simmer in some vinegar, a little bit of salt and sugar, so that it takes on the flavor of sauerkraut. Chef Voltaggio is known for the kind of cooking that is big risk, big reward. Sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't. If Krista doesn't make any mistakes and Voltaggio makes one, this could be an upset. One of the hallmarks of TOC is the blind tasting by a panel of culinary icons. Our judges have been waiting patiently in their trailers and have no idea what's going on in the arena right now. The chef who receives the highest total score will move on to the next round, and the other chef will be 86. Mustard? Yes, chef. Uh, Kalatora mustard. I'm going to start putting together my vinaigrette. Kalatora is basically Italian fish sauce. He is cooking like a madman. What a great looking dish, I mean. Michael, such a creative. I know our dishes are going to be vastly different. Right behind, Simon. I just want to stay true to my flavors and hope that takes me to the next round. I first go down with my spaghetti squash puree and then this beautiful breaded Moroccan meatball. On top of that, I want this nice cooling lebna and then finish with my beautiful pickled spaghetti squash and also some pickled Fresnos to just give it that kiss at the end. Just a little Fresno chili. This dish hits all the marks, so I hope it makes the judges happy. I hope it takes the win. All right, I'm done. For my open-faced pastrami sandwich, I decide to plate it so that the judges can go into it with a knife and fork. I'm glazing that pastrami and colatura mustard vinaigrette, and then on top of that is my spaghetti squash kraut. Looking at this dish, I took a risk. If the judges don't taste the vision in this dish, I could go home. Three.